the Houghton window, also known as the Easter window. In April 1992, the Reverend Mr Frank Houghton, the Minister of the Church, informed the Kirk Session that he had arranged to install a stained glass window in loving memory of his wife of 35 years and that it was to be unveiled on Sunday the 12th of April at the 11 o'clock service. The window he donated and had installed provides a strong message on the faithfulness of women in the Christian story, contrasted with the inconstancy and disloyalty of some of Jesus' male followers in his last days. A piata fills the centre space, showing the dead body of Jesus on his mother's lap. Mary is shown alone in her agony. A cock is shown below, contrasting the mother's love and courage with the story of St Peter's disloyalty and denial of Jesus. A red skull is shown at the bottom left, looking out of the light, showing that death did not want to face up to Mary and Jesus. Normally, shown in white, the skull was allowed to burn red. The swirls of red that can be seen on the grey pallor of Jesus' lifeless body and which seem illustrative of his bleeding wounds and the marks of the scourge were not in the original design. When Willie and John Clark put the glass in the kiln in Germany to fire it, the glass came out with the red swirls. Thinking that the red would burn off, they put the glass back in the kiln but the more they fired the glass, the darker the red swirls became. Overawed by the symbolism of the situation, they decided to do no more and left the glass as it was. The Last Supper is depicted on the left side of the window. The bread is shown ready to be broken and Judas is seen with his head turned away. Jesus' agony in the Garden of Gethsemane is shown below, with the disciples shown sleeping. The right side of the window shows the empty tomb discovered by the female followers of Jesus, and below it, the dinner at Emmaus, at which two of Jesus' followers recognised him when he broke bread with them. One of the followers is named in the Bible as Cleopas, the other is not identified. Willie Roger has unusually and significantly chosen to portray the second follower as a woman, perhaps acknowledging again the role of women in finding the empty tomb and bringing the message of the risen Lord back to the disciples. The scenes in all three lights are set against a curtain representing the curtain in the temple that was rent when Jesus died. The rent in the curtain can be seen represented at the top of the centre light above the piata. As this was a memorial window to Peggy Horton, Willie remembered that she did not like crucifixes and purposely left this imagery out of the design of the window. In all other aspects, Mr Houghton gave Willie a free hand with regard to the design. On the whole, he felt the window was a difficult subject to undertake and portray. Its gloominess was and is a stark contrast to the happier nativity window across the nave. This also is the reason why he left out the halos he had included in the nativity scene. Although he was generally pleased with the centre light showing Jesus and Mary, he was less pleased with the lights to the left and right. He felt that some of the design of the hands had been lost in translation from the original drawing to stained glass, and he feels now, looking back at the design, that some of the faces in the left and right lights are too stereotyped and too similar. Regardless of Willie's feelings of discomfort on looking back at the window, it is one of the most powerful and symbolic in the church. The dedication at the foot of the centre panel reads, Installed by Reverend Frank Houghton to the glory of God and in memory of his wife Peggy.
for 35 years, the Lady of the Manse.